to this? Okay. Good morning. Good morning. Hello, everyone. Good morning, everyone. Let me invite some people. Let me get some people on, y'all, so that y'all can understand why I've got these trumpets playing. Listen to it. Let me invite some people to today's daily devotion today. Because the Lord knows. Oh, Lord. victory y'all we've got the victory oh thank you we've got the victory hear the sounds of the trumpets playing hear them out we have got the victory y'all we have got the victory hear the sounds of the trumpets We have got the victory. Hello, Iris. What's going on, Queen? Yes, we're bringing in this new month with the sound of the trumpets, y'all. I'm going to read to you guys in my Bible why that is. Y'all hear this? That means we have got the victory. Okay? Do y'all hear this? Yes, we're going to let the trumpets roar. Lord bless you. Hey, Sandra. Good morning, everybody. Go ahead and share, share, share. You know that I love to do these other devotions and we all hear it. Lord, you know, before I even start the daily devotion, uh, first I wanted to say thank you. Thank you so much for a new day, your grace and mercy over all of our lives and, and waking us up this morning. Thank you so much for your sacrificial son, Jesus. Lord, I ask on today's daily devotion that you use me as your vessel to speak to your people, Lord. I ask that as we read your word, we go closer to you and, and we move um, in your truth. We don't just read your word and act as if we don't um, know it, but we actually move and act towards the things that we learn on today. In Jesus' name, amen. But y'all, hold on. I gotta play, let the trumpets play for two more seconds, okay? I gotta let the trumpets play for a little bit because we're gonna come in with victory, okay? We are gonna come in with victory, all right? Let the trumpets play, okay? Do y'all hear this? This is victory y'all okay so good morning to everybody um i did share this with as many people as i can so i know that people will be rolling on eventually um but i wanted to start off today's call with you know the victory sound of the trumpets right um because during my social media fast i learned a little bit about this but i love when i see it in scripture so that I can really get a full understanding as to, to what I'm learning, right? So I've been in Numbers for the book of Numbers. I finished Acts, I think, last week. So now I'm in Numbers. And Numbers is pretty much about how, um, in, okay, so Exodus, the book before, is when um, God went to, you know, call Moses to, to, to free the Israelites, right? So they became free and now they're in the wilderness and God promised to, to bring them to the to the land of milk and honey to that promised land right um but in numbers what they're talking about is how they're going through the wilderness and how you know they have several attempts to make it to the promised land but they don't end up making it to the promised land right hey good morning and the reason why I'm reading numbers is because I want to learn why they never made it to the promised land and why they had to wait 40 years before the next generation could make it into the promised land. And the reason for that is so far what I've been reading because I'm on chapter 12. First of all, they complain like crazy, y'all. They complain like crazy. And I'm going to go over the, some of the things that I learned. 
they complain like crazy and one of the biggest ways to stop you from receiving your blessing is focusing so much on what you don't have and complaining that god is just going to be like do you not realize what i just did for y'all i just brought you guys out of slavery and though you guys are in the wilderness and though y'all might just be eating bread all day because what they were complaining about was the fact that they're like man I want to go back to Egypt. We used to eat meat there. All we eat is bread every single day. They just complaining, 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 right? And so God got angry at them. He got angry at them. And he, he set a play on all those people that was complaining because of what they didn't have when they're not recognizing what God has already done. So let me give another two minutes not even another minute for us to play the sounds of victory and then i'm going to explain to you guys um i'm going to explain to you guys what the trumpets mean so let's get 60 seconds of victory hold on hold on y'all because this is the sound of victory this is the sound of victory Oh, it's all right. I was laughing when I read it because I was like, these people are crazy. You guys hear the trumpets roar and hear the trumpets. This is the sound of victory, y'all. The sound of victory. Yes. The trumpets are playing. So let me explain to you guys, okay? We're going to close this out with the sounds of victory. So in Numbers, which is what I told you I've been reading, in Numbers, they're talking about, you know, why they never made it to the promised land and why 40 years later, you know, the children end up making it into the promised land and not the, the people that God intentionally took out of slavery and said, I'm going to bring you guys to the land of milk and honey, but they never made it. The, the children made it in, not them, because of their complaints and just all the other stuff that they've done, which I haven't gotten to yet. But... I wanted to start today's call off with the sound of the trumpets because in scripture uh, in numbers 10 i'm going to read to you what it says and i was so happy that i came across this because like i told you during the fast when we were on the zoom calls with our um blessed and bossed up society they kept playing the trumpets but they weren't technically explaining to us what it meant so here it says it says in numbers 10 it says when you arrive in your own land and go to war against your enemies who attack you, sound the alarm with the trumpets. Then the Lord your God will remember you and rescue you from your enemies. So that's the first reason why you should play the trumpets. When you know that the enemy is just attacking you, you got to go to war with the sounds of the trumpets. I just found that on YouTube, put sounds of trumpets, and it's just playing out, okay? So when you are at attack with the enemy at war, play the sounds of the trumpets. Why? It says, then the Lord your God will remember you and rescue you from your enemies. Okay? The second thing is blow the trumpets in times of gladness. When you are just glad and full of joy, blow the sounds of the trumpet. Sounding them at your annual festivals and at the beginning of each month. It's only November 3rd. That's why I'm playing the trumpets. One, for gladness and because it's the beginning of the month. We are going to play the sounds of the trumpets. And blow the trumpets over your burnt offerings and your peace offerings. The trumpets will remind your God of his covenant with you. I am the Lord your God. On that cue, guess what? We're going to play the sounds of the trumpets trumpet okay we've got the victory y'all if we're going to war with our enemy guess what we're gonna play the sounds of the trumpet so that our lord can remember us and rescue us if we are glad we are gonna play the sounds of the trumpet we're gonna come into the new month as it says in scripture with the sounds of the trumpet so that we claim the victory over our lives okay I got the 
the victory. I'm playing the trumpets in gladness right now. And what I, I love about this is even when I have to go to war with the enemy, guess what? I'm going to play my trumpet. Because then the Lord will come and rescue me. Yes. Keep on playing the sounds of victory. Keep on playing the sounds of victory. Okay. So that was it. So yes, y'all, I'm telling y'all, every single time I read my Bible, I'm learning something new that's going to help me in my journey, in my spiritual journey, something that's going to help me to grow this relationship, help me to know how to go to war effectively, help me to learn how to fervently pray so that no enemy comes and attacks me or my family, right? That's what we, we get in our word for so that we know how to handle these things. And guess what? I just learned something new. We're going to be playing the sounds of the trumpet, y'all. We are going to play the sounds of the trumpet no matter where you are. If ever you feel like you are going at, at, in, in, a, in, a, in a war with an enemy, you better play them sounds. You better blast it on loud. And remember what the scripture says. Okay? This wasn't even the daily devotion. I just was like, hold on. It's the beginning of the month. I ain't even played my trumpets yet. I'm bringing in new victories, new blessings in this month, okay? We playing the trumpets, all right? So I wanted to, um, I didn't even look to see what the daily devotion would be because I wanted to share with you guys what I've been reading in numbers and, and because I think this is so important for all of us to know because we all are desired to make it to this promised land that God has promised us, right? But we need to know like what mistakes the people did and why they didn't make it. And we also need to know what mistake um what the, the, the other generation did in order to make it. Okay? In order to make it. So in um Numbers uh chapter 10, right? It the the the, the um the title is the first approach to the promised land, right? The the first approach to the promised land for the Israelites. When I read this, I was like, these guys are such idiots. Like, seriously? So what happened was they sort of get close to the land. And Moses sends two guys over to that land. And he's like, I need y'all to scope the land out and then come back and tell us what's going on. They go over there. They scope the land out. And they come back to tell them, oh, no, y'all. We cannot go over there. They, they, their, their, their government, their, their, their thing is just too powerful for us. We can't handle this. So they listened to the fool and they never made it. Okay. The same way how they kept complaining, right? It says the people complain. This was a real good yesterday. I was reading it like, are you kidding me? Thank you God that I'm reading this so that I know not to complain about the crazy things. Right. So like I said, they started complaining. They're like, Hold on, wait, let me see what they say. Hold on, I'm trying to get to the scripture. Okay, the people complain to Moses. So listen to this. We're in chapter 11 right now. Okay? It says, Soon the people began to complain about their hardships. How many of y'all complain about your hardships? You Listen to this. Because I know we all trying to make it to the promised land. So I need y'all to open up your ears. Soon the people began to complain about their hardships. And the Lord heard everything they said. Then the Lord's anger, anger blazed against them. And he set a fire to rage among them. And he destroyed some of the people in the outskirts of the camp. Then the people screamed to Moses for help. Because remember... The Mo Moses was leading them. God called Moses to lead the Israel the Israelites out and bring them to the promised land. So now they complain to Moses, right? Um, they said, then the people complained to Moses, and then he prayed to the Lord. The uh, then he prayed to the Lord. The fire stopped. After that, the area was known as Tabera, which means the place of um, the place of burning. Because fire from the Lord was burning among them. Then the foreign rabble who were traveling with the Israelites began to, cra began to crave the good things of Egypt. And the people of Israel 
also began to complain, right? Oh, I wish we had some meat. That's what they're saying. Oh, how I wish we had some meat. Okay? We remember the fish we used to eat free in Egypt, right? And all we have is, and all, and we had all the cucumbers, we had the melons, we had onions, we had garlic. Y'all, this is how detailed it is, okay? God is very detailed. Like, when I read his instructions on what he's calling them to do, I'm like, God is a very, very, very detailed God. We just have to listen to what he's telling us to do in his instructions. So we have to seek him like, God, what are you calling me to do right now? What do you want me to do right now in this moment? Give me the necessary instructions to execute on the plan that you have for my life. Right? So it says, we remember all the fish we used to eat, the melons, the cucumbers, the onion, the leeks, the garlic. But now our appetites is gone. Because all we eat here is manna, which is the bread. So now they out here complaining, y'all. How dare they? They out here complaining, y'all. They like, God, what's up? Why are we just eating bread every day? But they're not remembering. They're not remembering what God did for them. He parted the Red Sea for them, y'all. He parted the whole Red Sea for them because their enemies was coming against them in the wilderness. And then they get to the sea and they're over like, oh, my gosh, this is it for us. We about to die. And Moses calls on the Lord. And guess what? He parts the Red Sea for them. They make it across to the other side of the river and all the enemies fall into the sea and die. God saved them. But they over here complaining about why they only eating bread. Come on, y'all. We got to be so aware of what we're speaking. We got to remember. Michael Todd preaches this so much. You need to remember what God has done for you. Okay? So let's get back to it. It says, <laughs> they are so, I was laughing when I was reading this because I was like, I can't believe this. I'm so grateful I'm reading this because I've probably been out here complaining. Like yesterday I was complaining and Charles was like, stop. Because I was like, Charles, is very windy outside. I think it's going to storm. I don't like driving in the rain. I just can't right now. And he was like, instead of complaining, why don't you just start saying, Lord, I know it's windy outside, but I pray that it doesn't rain as my drive to Miami and I can get there safely. Right? He was like, all that complaining right now is not doing you any justice. And I was like, oh, you're so right. Maybe I should have a different perspective because over here, I'm completely sure it was gonna storm how it looked yesterday. And it didn't even storm yesterday, y'all. I had an easy breezy drive. I was in no traffic because I prayed before. I was like, Lord, I just expect to get there, you know, swiftly, no traffic, no rain, because I just don't like driving in the rain. And none of that happened when all morning, I was just over here complaining about how it's just gonna rain and how I just hate driving in the rain. He was like, you're just full of complaints right now. And I'm like, dang, I am. I need to just be grateful for this day because we never have nice windy days like this. I had to switch my perspective. Okay? So let's get back to the word. It says, the manna looked like small corridor seeds, and it was pale yellow like gum resin. The people would go out and gather it from the ground. They made the flour by grinding it with hand mills or pounding it into mortars, and then they boiled it into a pot and made it into a flat, a flat cake. So look, the Lord is having them work out there. So the manna ain't just coming to them. They working for it. They, they getting the seeds, they baking it, then they flattening it out. They're working. God is still making them work. That's what you have to understand in your in your waiting season. In that season when you feel like things are so hard, I always go back to the song, The Waymaker. Even if I don't feel him, feel him working, even if I don't see him working, he is still working. He is still working. And that's what I was telling Charles yesterday. I said, dang, God has built my stamina so well that I'm not even phased. I'm like, okay, God, I know exactly what you're doing. I don't said i don't even need a trip because i don't even want to be like the israelites i ain't even going to trip right now this is just another this uh, another test to to build my endurance i'm like come on god i get it now i get it now you just want me a little bit closer to you i get it 
okay like I, i'm not even tripping i was like and i was told y'all i said charles i swear to you if my endurance was not built if my endurance was not built i would have been living like the rest of the world going crazy out of peace just i'm i'm at such peace y'all it only it, it, it i'm at i just got crazy faith that's it I, I just got a whole lot of crazy faith okay you gotta have this endurance and, and these two years of building up my relationship with christ has been building up this strength building up this endurance so that when any test and any trial comes my way i'm not even phased i'm just like I see you, God. I see what you doing. I see you. I don't even got time to complain because you already promised me. You told me you're going to take me here. I don't know how I'm going to get there, but this was a part of your plan. That's where you can get the peace from. That's where you can get the peace from, knowing that whatever is stirring up right now, it's a part of his plan. He's very intentional, y'all. It's a part of the plan. He's breaking you down a little bit because he's like, I need you to build your strength a little bit. I'm trying to see if you're you going to hold it out or not. I'm trying to see if you're going to lean on me or if you're just going to keep complaining or you're going to keep going to that person and that person. I'm trying to see. Okay? So now, um, it says, right? So it says, Moses heard all the families standing in the doorways of their tents whining and complaining. Right? And the Lord became extremely angry. And then so Moses started getting aggravated. And Moses said to the Lord, why are you treating me, your servant, so harshly? Have mercy on me. What did I do to deserve the burden of all these people? Did I give birth to them? Did I bring them into the world? And remember, y'all, before I finish this, Moses, he's like 90 years old right now. God called Moses when he's like 90 to free the people. And Moses like... I'm not about to do this. How can I do this? And God's like, no, I called you to do this. You're going to get it done. Like, if you read Exodus, I was kind of annoyed at Moses and Exodus in the beginning because God kept calling him. And, and this is what a lot of people are like. God kept calling him and saying, Moses, I have called you to execute this plan. And Moses is like, no, Lord, it's not me. You got the wrong one. He's like, Moses, I have called you to do this. And he's like, are you sure it's me? Are you sure you got the right one? And he's like, Moses, I need you to execute on this. And he's like, mm, I don't think I'm qualified. You know how many people miss their blessings because they keep thinking that God is not calling them to do something that God is calling them to do. I was getting so annoyed at Moses. I'm like, Moses, God keeps calling you to do this. And he's telling you what you need to do, but you keep denying it. You need to do it. And he finally did it because God was like, okay, Clearly, you don't want to go by yourself. I'm going to send your brother with you. Okay? We got to seek him, y'all. So let me get back to it. So it says, Moses is like, did I give birth to them? Did I bring them into this world? Why did you tell me to carry them in my arms like, I, like a mother carries a nursing baby? How can I carry them to the land you swore to give their ancestors? Where am I supposed to get this meat that they keep complaining about? They keep whining to me saying, give us meat, give us meat to eat. I can't carry all these people by myself. The load is far too heavy. If this is how you intend to treat me, just go ahead and kill me then. Do me a favor and spare me this misery. That's what Moses cried out to the Lord, right? So then the Lord said to Moses, gather before me 70 men who are recognized as elders and leaders bring them to the tabernacle and stand there to stand there with you i will come down and talk to talk to you there and i will take some of take some of the spirit that is upon you and i will put the spirit upon them they will bear the burden of the people along with you so you will not have to carry it alone and he said say to the people purify yourselves for tomorrow you have meat to eat. You were whining and the Lord heard you when you had cried. And the Lord heard when you cried out for some meat. Okay? We were better off in Egypt. It says now the Lord is going to give you meat and you will have to eat it. It won't be just for a day or two or five or ten. But it was going to be for a whole month until you gag and you're sick of it. Y'all remember when I was telling you, I was like, dang. In the Old Testament, God was a little harsh there. He said, you gonna get, you gonna eat the meat that y'all been complaining about. I'm gonna give it to y'all. 
okay? But you gonna eat it till you sick of it. But y'all was complaining about how y'all ain't get meat. Here it is, right? Y'all, I'm telling y'all, y'all better. I'm telling y'all, okay? So it says, um, it says, um, for you have rejected the Lord who is here among you, and you have whined to him, saying, Why did you ever leave Egypt? Y'all, that's why we gotta be so careful about what we're complaining about. Okay? So now I wanted to read something with you guys in this in the study notes that was quite powerful. It said here, wait, where is it? Wait, where is that at? Okay. It says, dissatisfaction comes when our attention shifts from what we have to what we don't have. That's when we come dissatisfied, when we start focusing on all the stuff that we don't have instead of focusing on what we have. It says, the people of Israel didn't seem to notice what God was doing for them. Setting them free. That's the first thing he did. He set them free. He was making them a nation, y'all. 600,000 people. He was making them a nation. He, he freed all of them, making them a nation, going through the wilderness. He said, I'm going to bring you guys to the promised land. Remember, in the promised land, that land is already there. It's not a land where there's nobody. People are already there. But what he want, what God wants to do is bring this nation into the promised land so that they can be the witnesses in the test for the Lord of, of all the great things that the Lord did for them so that then those can, people can convert to Christianity. But guess what? They don't make it because they're too busy complaining. So if they're too busy complaining, how are they supposed to go to a land to share the gospel when they're too too busy complaining about what they think God has not done for them instead of think instead of talking about what God has done for them? Right? So he said he set them free, making them a nation, giving them a new land. That promised land was gonna be their land. Because they were so wrapped up in what God wasn't doing for them, right? They could think of nothing but the delicious Egypt food that they left behind. Somehow, they forgot that the brutal whip of the Egyptian slavery was the cost of eating that food. <laughs> y'all ate meat every day because y'all got beat every day. Did y'all forget? Did y'all forget? Right? That was the price. But they forgot that. Right? It says, before we judge the Israelites too harshly, it's helpful to think about what occupies our, our attention most of the time. And that's why I say I love to read my word because it helps you reflect on, wait, have I been doing the same things that these Israelites been doing? Complaining? Have I forgotten what God has brought me through and out of? right it says are we grateful for what god has given us or are we are or are we always thinking about what we would like to have we should not allow our unfulfilled desires to cause us to forget god's gift of life food health work and friends okay and then another thing was here right this is very vital okay it says the israelites complained and then moses complained right but god responded positively to moses and negatively to the rest of the people why is that hmm it says the people Complain to one another, to each other about what they don't have. But guess what Moses did? He went straight to the Lord. He said, Lord, why have you put this burden on me? He went to the Lord, y'all. Are y'all complaining to y'all next door neighbors, to your friends, calling them up because you need some relationship advice, calling them up because you are, you got some hardships going on and you need to call somebody to ask them for some advice. Who are you calling on? Because you're not going to get the answer by calling your friend. Okay. It says Moses took his, 
It says that they complained to one another and nothing was accomplished. Moses took his plank to complaint to God. Who could save, who can solve any problem? Many of us take our many of us are good at complaining to each other when we need to learn how to take our problems to the one who can do something about it. Your friend's not about to help you. God can help you though. Right? You might not even realize that by you, you know, going to God first, he sends people your way to help you. So that's why you need to go to him first for counsel. When you got these issues that's going on in your household, your finances, when you got these issues that's going on in your, you know, relationships, when you got these issues that's going on in your family, you got to take it to him first. Stop calling up your friends. Right? Even your spouse, you don't got to speak to your spouse about it first. Speak to the Lord about it first. And then you could come to your spouse about it and tell him how you spoke to the Lord about it. That is, that, that's what we got to do is hear in the living word. Do y'all see how the Israelites complained to one another and nothing got solved, but Moses went straight to the Lord and instantly the Lord spoke back to him? We got to learn from these people's mistakes so that we know how to, you know, go about living the life that God has in store for us. Okay, like y'all, this word was it. I had to share this because I was reading it yesterday, right before I went out because I was just sitting here like, what should I do? I'm like, I don't, I'm not really moved to like do anything from my work right now. I'm like, I'm gonna just move my Bible. Like, I just want to read my Bible. So I went into reading my Bible and I was like, dang, God, you did it again. I knew you called me to read it for a reason. You did it again. Had I went to do something else, I wouldn't have received this revelation right here. And this revelation is don't complain remember what he did call on him first y'all those are the three main tips out of today's daily devotion be aware about what you're complaining about because he does get angry but thank goodness we have jesus for salvation but still ask yourself why is it taking you so long to get to the to the to the land of the milk and honey we got to be aware of these things and we got to be moving in his will. They're not moving in his will right now because they're so pressed about the meat that they, they, they don't have. Instead of remembering like, dang, we used to get whipped. And then we used to get dinner for that. That's not a good reinforcement act. You know how they have like the reinforcement? You know, like you, you buzz the dog and that's going to be his like, his, uh, what? I forget the word, y'all his uh it's like still like reinforcement to like get a treat or something that's what it was so they're not remembering that instead they're they're too trying to they're giving into their flesh and their blood the, the temptations of taste something that tastes good because it tastes good on their taste buds they're just sick of eating this bread but they forgot about the hardship they went through y'all we have to remember these things so I just want to thank you all for being on today's call. And I want to close this out with prayer. Lord, thank you so much for this word. Help us to remember in times of complaints where we might have a complaint slip out of us to instantly, instantly switch our attention back to you. And if we do complain, at least we complain to you and not to other people. But complain to you so that you can hear us out. So that you could be the one to solve our problems. Because you are the only one that can solve our problems. Help us, Lord, to remember. Remember. Remember what you have done for us. So that we can live in a state of gratitude. So that we don't have to live in a state of want. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Okay? That was the word for today. Let's play the sounds of the trumpet. Why? Because we got the victory. We got the victory, y'all. Y'all, my YouTube clicked off, so it ain't that. It's not on how I wanted it to be, but it's right here. We got the sounds of the trumpet, y'all. Okay? We literally have the full victory we have the victory okay 
we got the big four three. Let's play it, y'all. The sounds of the trumpet are roaring. Okay. Wait, what's happening here? Oh, I don't know what just happened. It just. Oh, I clicked the wrong one. That's why. Good rest of your day and God bless you all. Two.